Okay. Can you see the slides? Okay, it's clear. Okay. In this lesson, <coughs> we will talk about the introduction to machine learning. And what's machine learning? How can we use the machine learning in artificial intelligence? Okay. And so I put the a title in here, like this one. Introduction to ML. Okay. So, what is ML? ML is a subset of artificial intelligence, okay? But it's directly related to the machine, and it's the learning process, okay? But the machine, uh, not like the solid structure, for example, a program like the ChatGPT is a machine, and it's machine learning, okay? And so, there are two objective in here like this one focusing on the development developing the algorithm or the model okay in machine learning we are totally focusing on the what the development of the some kind of algorithms that we need to complete a specific task without what? Without a human touch. Okay? And so, the other purpose of these things is that they enable the computer to learn from data. Okay? Or some experience. For example, if you have the, uh, some fault case in our machine or the program and the computer should learn from these mistakes okay and so we are reaching uh, some question here to do what we should decide and the what the prediction the ML algorithms mainly directly used for the decision process or the prediction of the something, okay? For example, if we have a, any signal, like the biomedical signal, for example, the ECG or EMG, we want to model this EMG by using the what? The ML algorithms, okay? Or we want to check the, the patient is okay or not, coming from the what? The, like, for example, HRCT data or CT data, computer tomography, okay? Or the sum, we can check the sum uh, figures or the image, and then we can decide to what, the, whether the patient is okay or not, okay? And so, we can summarize it like that. The main purpose of these things is that we can automatically improve the decision or the process by using what the ml mainly learning process okay the main purpose is here this decision and process should be satisfied with the what with the learning process but with some basic feature which means that the explicitly without a program okay <clears throat> so if you are using the ml application and then this algorithm can learn automatically from the data okay otherwise this is an expert system it's a kind of the artificial intelligence process but in the machine learning application we should learn from data in real time or if we add the some data or feed data to the ML algorithms, and then this algorithm should learn it from the new experience, okay? <clears throat> so, these are the main purpose uh, for accomplish the what the machine learning algorithms. And so, what kind of learning process learning process in ML. 
we have five kind of learning rule or the basic concepts in the machine learning applications. We have the supervised learning here. Okay? What's the supervised learning? Anyone knows? Okay. This learning coming from the what or completing uh, with the labeled data. What's the meaning of the labeled data? Do you know it? Labeled data means that we exactly the inputs and the outputs for a specific task. For example, if we have the any price for a oil, and so we can calculate the prices of the oil for 10 liters or the something like that. And so if we have the X and Y, and so this is called the labeled. Okay? And we have the other algorithm or the learning processing here, unsupervised learning. And so unsupervised learning is directly related to the what? The unlabeled data. For example, if we have the any distribution or the sum data, uh, direct focusing on the sum regions or on the plane, for example, the x1 and x2, collecting some space, and so, but we don't know the what is that, and then we can say that this data is collected at the one region. And so, we can say that uh, there could be uh, some relation between this data, okay? And so, this is the unlabeled data, and we can learn from it, okay? This is called the unsupervised learning. And also, we have the semi-supervised learning. Semi-supervised learning includes or contain the what from both labeled plus unlabeled data. Could you please the, close the door? Okay. For example, if we have the sum labeled data for an X to Y, but we may have the sum annotated and unannotated data from the what? This data, okay? And so we can combine these two things is here, and then we can say that the, this can be learned with what the same supervised way, by using the what, the both the labeled and unlabeled data, okay? We have the some kind of algorithms in here like this one, the reinforcement learning. Have you heard that? Reinforcement learning. In the reinforcement learning we have the sum agent or penalty function and this agent based reward algorithm can weigh us to maximize the R modeling techniques. Okay? The difference between the unsupervised or supervised learning from the reinforcement learning, reinforcement, reinforcement learning both utilize the labeled and unlabeled data, but with some function. For example, we can define the sum function, which is called as the penalty function or the agent function, and then we can feed the whole the data, labeled or unlabeled data, and then we can take the sum values from this function. For example, 0.2. And so, this means that this data is not enough or is not good for the training process. But in each iteration, we can train this penalty function in order to, in order to maxim maximize its value. And so, in time, we can learn the unknown data and label it data from this penalty function, okay? Because it's the criteria of our algorithms. Agent-based agent means that the agent is some function. For example, it's a probability function. 
okay and so each probability function has a range of the what the zero to one okay one is good zero is not okay and so this agent is taken for this reinforcement learning and then we want to maximize this probability function and so if it reaches to the what to one value and so we have the learned pattern from this one but in supervised or unsupervised algorithm there is no agent function okay you get that okay and we have also a deep learning process in here okay in the deep learning we can say that this is the artificial neural network with multi-layer structure okay and if we have the many layer in the neural network and then we should utilize the what the deep learning process or deep learning techniques okay i will uh, introduce the deep learning in the next sessions okay and so this the whole uh, we want to learn about from these things okay this could be the past values in here okay and so <coughs> right now we should focus on the supervised learning and what is that and what's the meaning of the geometric representation of it okay firstly we need to give the some head title in here like this one supervised learning and suppose that we have the or firstly we need to give the some definition in here like this one supervised L is equal to what the algorithms learns to make prediction or decision from labeled data okay this is the basic definition of supervised learning okay but in the applications we have this kind of information in here suppose that we have the data like this one for example we have the two axes in here like this one in the one axis we should give the x value which is input and we should take also the y value it's the output okay and so the x or the f or the inputs are called in machine learning algorithms is a feature okay or a feature vector if I'm told uh, if I'm taking the this value in here like this one this is the input I can say that the feature or the input in deep learning algorithms or the reinforcement learning or the ANN applications okay and this Y is called the what the output value or the outcomes of these algorithms okay and so for example if we have this kind of data is stored in this algorithm and so we can say that, that this is could be the what the one linear signal but with uh, some noise or the uncertainties from this model and so we can say that if we have the x and the y output value and so we can model these things in here like this one y is equal to what a times x plus b okay but in each training data which we call it to x and y is given at this time and so we can say that this can be used to train the model or in mathematical way we can find the what the proper a and b value okay 
because the each data are given to us okay this is called the supervised learning you get it okay there are two types of the supervised learning in applications we have like this one if you have the any data in here like this one and so we can predict the whole the values in here x and y and so we can draw the sum line in here with a specific model which is called the regression okay and so the example regression is includes the perceptron or multi-layer perceptron or deep learning applications for example the convolutional neural networks okay regression is directly related to what the supervised learning or is based on the supervised learning and we have the another formula or the application relates to what the supervised learning which is the what the classification problem okay for example if you have the data like this one okay and so each data is labeled and then we can draw the sum line to split the each data and so we can say that this is the A data or this is the B data. This is what the classification problem. Okay? Classification problem. And so image classification based on the neural networks or the convolutional neural networks is directly related to what these things or the sentiment analysis can be given as an example of these algorithms okay any question okay perceptron means that it's a neuron and see in the next weeks i will uh, talk about the the perceptron okay multi perceptron means that it's a neural network but it's the structural neural network feed forward neural network means that the multi perceptron okay a perceptron is a one neuron okay and then today uh, we are going to <coughs> create uh, some example related to the perceptron or neuron models okay and so in the second place we have the unsupervised learning okay in the unsupervised learning we have the sum definition in here the algorithms learns the pattern or structure in data without any labeled training data set okay or we don't have the target values like the supervised one for example if we have or the suppose that we have data like this one we have two features in here x2 and x1 for example x1 is the length x2 is a mass or the total mass or the price of something okay and so we can see that by drawing the figures 
we have some kind of data, like this one, but without labeled data, or these data are unlabeled. But if we are looking at the picture, we can say that the, this data may share the some features, because collecting the at the some regions in here, and this data may also add different features or represent different features. Okay. And so this data x1 and x2 can be stated or the modeled by using the sum algorithms. Okay? This is called the unsupervised learning. For example, if we have the data like this one, and so we can check the mean values of the whole data. Because the mean values of the data in here like this one, we have the total mean value is around that, okay? And this distribution is around that, okay? And so, we can model by using the what, the sum algorithms, or the mean, or the standard deviation values, or the probability theory, in order to, in order to take the hidden pattern from this data, okay? Do you understand that? So, these features are called a class, okay? And in general meaning, we can say that uh, it's called the cluster, okay? Each class. And so, we can say that it's cluster structure, okay? There are three types of the unsupervised learning algorithm. And we have the sum general pattern in here, like this one, x2 and x1. And so we can write the whole data in here, like this one. And so we can split the each class in here without any information. And so this is the clustering, okay? Class 1 and class 2. Okay? There is a similarity between classes, the basic programming classes, or this class is different than basic programming classes? Basic programming classes? Dictionary classes, functions. No, no, no. It's, it's, la it's not like the Python classes. Now, this class is a called the s mm, some pattern on the data. For example, these are the, for example, x21 and x11 which is represented in here, okay? This is not the programming language syntax, okay? This class is a feature or the collective data around the some point, okay? It's only maths right now, okay? And so, <coughs> this is called the clustering. And there are some algorithms to cluster all the data in here like this one, the k-means clustering and Gaussian mixture model, okay? This is a probabilistic way of the what to take the some hidden patterns from the what the maths or the data, okay? Or we can reduce or reduction on the what the data or data structure or the distributions. For example, if we have the data like this one. Okay? And so, if we take the or create the class structure in here, and so we have the denomination in here. But this class creates the what? The two directional vector. But, using the principal component analysis, we can diminish or reduce its features. For example, this is the x direction, this is the y direction, and so we can reduce or remove the y direction. And so, this is called the dimensionality reduction. Because the general pattern is in the direction of the what the x, 
and maybe y is a noise. You don't know that, okay? And so there are some algorithms in order to uh, reduce the dimensionality, which means that the PCA, principal component analysis, okay? Or <coughs> we can deduce to some data in here, like this one. For example, if we have the, any data, like the x vector, it's an input, and y vector, it's an output. And so, we have the distributions in here, like this one. But one variable is in here. And so, if I need to model this pattern, we should give the what these values, or this model, okay? Mr. General Direction or the general distribution is directly related to what? These terms. Okay? And so, this is the anomaly. Okay? And then, the autoencoders or this structure finds out to what? To these things. Okay? Anomaly detection. Okay. So, in the third bit, we have the semi supervised learning. Okay. In what? In ML applications. Okay. What does it mean? It means that the algorithm is trained using both labeled plus unlabeled data. Okay? It's called the semi-supervised learning. And the basic goal is that is to gain some information from limited data. Okay? For example, suppose that we have the data distribution like for example we have two features in here like this one x1 and x2 they are called the what the inputs of our neural network or the some algorithms okay and then we want to know which class or the how many class can be created from this data okay and then we can say that the there could be some data in here, like this one. And so we have also data in here. We have also data in here. Okay? Normally, if you don't know the every label in here, for example, we don't know the blue dots and this blue X, we don't know the identity of these things. But we know the what? The red dots or red X, okay? You can say that the, we can create the one class in here, like this one. We can do that, right? Because we don't know the every data or every points. But instead of these things, we use the X1 and X2 in an unsupervised way, okay? Unsupervised learning is applied on this data, and then this blueprint is assigned to some classes, which we don't know. 
For example, this is C1, C2, C3, C4. But we don't know the meaning of the class, class okay? C1, C2, C3, or C4. It's an un arbitrary class. And here, this time, this x value, the x points, is included with the blue one, okay? And so this feature is automatically assigned to the one class in an unsupervised way. And then we can create the C1, C2, C3, C4 in here. And in the labeled data at the end of this algorithm, Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, and we can utilize the supervised learning in here, okay? This is the way to complete the same supervised learning in data. This is the advantage of the utilization of the what the same supervised learning. Do you understand that? The advantage of it? You get it? Okay. So, if data is not labeled even if in this case and the blue dots or blue X is modeled by using the what the unsupervised way okay so there are some basic definition in the what the machine learning algorithms which we call it the training and test data set Okay? So, <clears throat> what is training data? Training data means that the data used to train the network or the ML in general means okay there could be some algorithms in here and then uh, we should split the training data or create the training data to what to learn these features from this data and this could be or may have the labeled or unlabeled data if the unlabeled data is processed with this notion and so we want to use the what the unsupervised learning if we are using labeled data and the supervised learning methods should be applied on this algorithm but we should create this training data to train the any model in AI applications okay and we have also a test data Test data used to test your algorithm, ML applications. Because if we have only the utilization of the training data, and then we can learn all the data. But in real application, we may have the, some noises or the different data that we want to know uh, the, anything about the model. Okay. And so we could not uh, reach the every data for the every process. For example, in autonomous car, uh, we don't have the, any picture of the, what the humans or the conditions. And so we should split the training data and test data. And we can train from training data and test on the test data because the test data cannot be used in the training process. And so if your algorithm or the ML application is OK, and then the algorithm can be corrected or provided some proofs to what the, your algorithm or your ML application is OK. OK? This is why we should split the whole the data into the water training and the test one. Okay? Okay. And so, in general meaning, the, this is called the ground truth. What's the meaning of the ground truth? Yeah. 
Grand Fruit. Maybe please be, be, be louder because uh, when you're speaking. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes. In a simple way, in a simple way, the ground truth is the main goal or the degree of the what your algorithm performance. Okay? The ground truth is proved and then we can say that the ML application can be run on any platform or the any applications. Okay? So we have the two process or the two algorithms or the methods for what? For creating the training and test data in here. And so when we are dealing with with data, we may use the hold out methods. Hold out method. In hold out methods, we have the 100% of data, right? And so we can split the data 70 or 80% training, 30 to 20% test, okay? But randomly. We may choose the data from these distributions, and so if we have the, any distribution like the linear function or the sum cluster, and so randomly we select or pick the sum data for the what the 70 percent for the training and the 30 percent for the test. This is called the holdout method. What about the validation set? Validation set means that the 30 to 20, okay? This is called the validation set. And validation set is uh, the general meaning of the uh, deep learning algorithms, okay? It's the validation set means that the test data in here, okay? There could be many definition in here, like this one. The validation set is uh, totally uh, equal to the water test data, okay? But in the second method, validation set it's mainly used to define the water cross validation. Okay? This is the same method, but in a different way. The cross validation method, the more robust method to train your network. For example, in the cross validation method, CV, cross validation. We split all the data, like this one. For example, we split data to one, two, three region. And in the first place, the first one is taken for the test, and the other is the tray. Okay? In the second place, we use the second region for the test. The other terms are used to train, okay? In the third place, we have the one, two, three, and train, train, and the third bit is used to what the test data, okay? And so in each case, we train the neural network and test the data, okay? And so accuracy one is obtained in here, accuracy two, and accuracy three. and we will collect all the term in order to what the mean accuracy value, okay? And so, in this way, the every data is evaluated on each itself, okay? And then, we can reach the more proper representation for the what our ML application, okay? But in this case, we have the test data in here, in the holdout method, it's called the test, but uh, this is totally what the validation process. Okay, you get it. Okay. 
In our ML applications, in this lesson, we will utilize the cross-validation technique, okay? And sometimes the, we will use the holdout methods, okay? But in your projects, I want to use the, you to use the cross-validation techniques, okay? This is the more robust and the efficient way to get the pattern or the, get the tr ground truth of your algorithms, okay? Okay. And so, if you want to take a <coughs> training process or the perform the training process, there could be some important steps. important steps to creating or create the training data. Firstly, if you have the any data in the ML application, you must apply the data processing techniques in here. Reducing the noise or meaningless data. For example, if we have uh, removing noise in here, okay? For example, if we have the data distribution like this one, and so this like the what, the sum function with a linear relation. But these noises are forced to your ML application to train, okay? And so if you are removing the whole the noise data in here, or suppress to hold the noises and then your ML application is the best performance or the uh, shows the best performance or the more better performance than the previous one okay and so if you have the, any data in here like this one you should focus on the how you can clean your data in order to what in order to, for the training process okay this is important because because this could be the meanings meaningless okay this noise. The only important part is that is this this linear interpretation, okay, or the hyperplane, okay. Do you understand that? Okay. In the second place, we should talk about the data augmentation. If you have the limited data for some pictures or the images there could be some techniques in here, like this one, rotate or split your picture. In order to what? In order to push the data as a new variable to your ML application. For example, if you want to analyze or identify a person like this one, if we are using this data only to train your neural network or the CNN or the deep learning application, we may have the, some success. For example, the 8% accuracy. But we can also give this rotated data. Or we can also give this rotated data. Or we can split this data like this one. Okay? And so, this increase your accuracy or the training performance of the what? Your algorithms. Okay? And so, the data augmentation is important process to train your ML applications. And you must learn how to augment your data in an efficient way. Uh, yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you, you, you never know that because if you are uh, you, do you know the ensemble learning in here <coughs> your friends say that the, this picture may be failed in training process but you may never know because the CNN or the deep learning applications take the unknown patterns that we cannot know okay and so if you are try or use the this picture and then you made the 8% accuracy but 
if you are removing this pattern and so you may take the 90 percent and then you can say that uh, this picture should be removed okay and so in this plane this high hyper plane optimization is accomplished by using the what this catch this situation okay but we don't know the uh, whether the it's okay or not for our training algorithm okay when in the technical term which is the ensemble learning you may note that okay you can check it the ensemble learning and then you will find out uh, which picture are to be used in your study or not okay Uh, you may no no, no you, you may never know that because the, if you have the some autoencoder structure or the gun networks in here and then the gun maybe use this picture to complete the whole the task and so you may never know that only know is that the, if you are increasing this data and this is the what the useful or useless pattern and then your neural networks or the deep learning application remove or unfit this picture okay kesinlikle no no in order to look at the performance of these things the ensemble learning should be analyzed if you are if you are read about the, this ensemble learning process you may understand what I'm saying okay so the other term is that the balancing class may cause the oversampling or undersampling for example if we have the sinusoidal signal like this one These are the output with respect to the X. Okay? If you are choosing the training data in here with the blueprints. And so and also I take this training data. Can I model this pattern in here from the training data? Why? Yes, yes. We may increase the what the model representation in here, okay? And so if I take the another point in here like this one, we cannot the balancing data in here. But if I take this data like this one, this representation in each point, and so this reduces the noises and balancing all the data. Which means that we can easily train your model by using these terms. These concepts are the important because the, in the data processing we can utilize the some general pattern or the functions. For example, the probability theory or the frequency domain, fast Fourier transform or the wavelet transform in order to enrich your data representation. And we can remove the whole the noises and then the ML algorithm can learn anything about this data in an easy way okay because the ml can learn everything if you have the sufficient data but in this way the main parts or the main dimension can be contained with this, the data processing and data augmentation or the balancing class your application is most or is more efficient than the previous one okay this is the important part of the r Study. And so, we should also learn about the what the hyperparameter tuning, which is called the ensemble learning. Tuning. For example, if we have the any data like this one, this data is represented by the linear function like this one but if I choose the model function by using the exponential way for example like this one and so it's more 
convenient to model this data, which we call it the hyperplane optimization or hyperparameter tuning. For example, if you are building the any neural network structure, how many neurons can be used or are used for your study or which learning parameters should be selected or the initialization of the what your coefficients must be what in the range of the zero to one. You may choose these terms in order to what in order to get the reach the best performance from your ML application. Okay? Okay. Let's take a break for 10 minutes and then we will continue with the regression problem. Okay? But uh, firstly, we need to write the Python code for this training and test data test. Firstly, okay? <laughs>